Uh, bad call, but go for it. <laughs> oh, baby. <laughs> so we're just gonna jump right into it, huh? Something's gonna get real fucked up. We are drinking whiskey. I put gin on top of my gin. Giggling about bullshit. <laughs> you shaped your nutsack to play it with the boys? <laughs> oh my god, we're recording. I'm trying to fill the void. That's what you want. An alabaster smooth penis. <laughs> Zig and Larry ignore a topic. The microphone's broken. Hey! Hey! Welcome to Zig and Larry Break a Microphone. <laughs> Are you recording? Oh yeah, for sure. Okay, so let's... <laughs> Let's start the show now. <laughs> Here we are. Welcome to Zig and Larry, the only podcast on the internet that I'm aware of. It's the only uh, podcast on the internet. I'm pretty sure it's the only one. Uh, we got, uh, let's see, there's a lovely picture in the background of me holding up a huge dildo uh, in front of Larry's face. Yes. Larry currently drinking himself some Jameson. I myself had quite a bit of Cuddy Sark today and yesterday. Excellent. How's it going for you with the, uh, the Cuddy Sark? You know what? It's Grandpa Booze, but I'm leaning into it. I'm leaning into age so well right now. It's phenomenal. <sighs> I'm totally comfortable with it. In your 20s, you know all the people at like the award shows. Especially like the music awards. And then in your 30s, you start to go, ah, I only know like half these people. Oh, that's weird. And then in your 40s, you go, I don't give a fuck who these people are. Yeah, pretty it's much. It's a totally different feeling. Yeah, and it's it's very freeing. It's, yeah. It's very, very freeing to just hit black socks and sandals. Although, I guess that's in fashion now. I see so many teenage kids wearing black socks with like Tevas. And I'm like... so ahead of my time. If... Right. If I would, if we had done that though in high school, how many ass kickings would we have received? I don't think I own black socks in high school. I don't, I don't think I did either. No. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, just uh, some nice, some nice chinos with a tucked-in flannel shirt year round. <laughs> Fuck them. God damn. Oh shit. Talk about uh, fashion. So yesterday, I mean, yesterday, I don't know how it was by you, but it was like one of those random days in October. That it's just 75 and beautiful out. Yeah, yeah. And I, you know, it was Saturday, so I had the day off. So I just decided to go on go on an adventure where I literally just walked for miles and miles, ended up in um, just a clothing store. Because I'm like, you know what, I need, uh, I need shit like underwear. And I'm going to look at new pants. Because yes, you need to shit your underwear. Got it. I, well, I don't need to, but I get to. <laughs> But I'm like, I need another pair of pants for the winter because guess what? I COVID ate my way out of most of my own jeans. <laughs> yeah. So much like in the summer, we bought new shorts. Now we're buying new pants. And that's the only time I buy new clothes is if they literally fall apart or if I've eaten myself out of them. Yeah. Well, I told you I do Stitch Fix, right? And I explained what Stitch <laughs> yeah. Fix was to you, which is great because I don't have to shop. I just put in a description of here's what I want you to try and find for me. And then, and then I don't have to think about it, which is yeah, great. They've been sending you sleeveless t-shirts and fucking sandals. Yeah, it's, which it's I great. I totally respect, especially for you. I want that. For you. I am going nowhere. I am doing nothing except drinking on my back porch and in my driveway. I need mm -hmm. clothes appropriate for that. They're like, well, here you go. Yeah, yeah, fucking hill jack. Just <laughs> we, we found an old Miller Lite shirt that we pulled off a hobo. <laughs> <laughs> and one and, and one Tommy Bahama sandal. Go for it. <laughs> we bleached it, but only in the armpits. <laughs> that, I can just see you. Like, that's for slapping the flies. Your, on your G Cal, where you're organizing your day, you literally have put 505 drink in my own driveway. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta, so you don't forget. Yeah. You get, well, I mean, you know. You, you, if I'm out there in the back at 5.05, the sun's too bright and there's not enough shade. I got to move <laughs> to the driveway, get a little shade up Absolutely. there. Yeah. You pay the goddamn mortgage, you get to drink <laughs> at all the property. Exactly. We uh, we just got new siding and, and a new roof. I like to go out there and That's sit right. and, yeah. just, and just look at it and go, <laughs> look at that. That's the, damn. House is covered. the house is currently covered properly. <laughs> look, it's damn fine work. Hey, hey, Carl. Literally, my neighbor's name is Carl, which is great for me. 
Because <laughs> that's my brother's dog. So <laughs> it's my go-to name whenever I can't. <laughs> Carl, <laughs> Carl and Dale. <laughs> Kale, hey, hey, Carl, look at that. It's damn fine work, isn't it, Carl? You want a beer? No, you don't drink? Don't trust a man that don't drink. All right, see you later, Carl. I'm going to see what Dale's doing. <laughs> hey, Dale, come here and look at this work. There is no man on the planet named Dale who doesn't drink. No, no. no. But my point with the uh, the Stitch Fix is that there's been a few pairs of jeans that they've sent me. that When it was still cold out before, I was like, please stop sending me long pants. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to wear them, and I have no reason to. Not right now. And so, uh, but, but before that they were sending me, um, and don't get me wrong, the jeans that they sent me look really sharp. They fit well. They're really nice. But when I held them up, I noticed that the tag said skinny. And I was like, well, Uh. no, we're not. That's, that's, (laughs) that's a misnomer. You sent, you sent this, a pair of skinny jeans. I don't, that's just, that, that should be just should be called stretchy chunky is what it should be called. (laughs) I literally bought a pair of pants yesterday because they said max stretch on them. <laughs> it's like they're stretchy fucking denim. They're max great. Max stretch sounds like a shitty eighties cartoon. Yeah, like and I had the I had the the action figure, but I left them in the back of the Buick and it melted all over the upholstery and dad got pissed. Oh man, dad was angry. Uh, your your max stretch just leaked all over the goddamn orange Buick. Now get back there with some WD forty and a paint scraper and clean that shit up. <laughs> <laughs> I uh the the thing that like it really tweaked me out and I didn't realize it until I was at checkout. Cuz I just like by the way as a 42 year old man going clothes shopping by yourself feels weird because you're like I feel like I need somebody to give me permission to purchase what I want cuz I walked out with a black pair of pants, underwear, a new black hoodie and I bought a brand new Nirvana t-shirt. Now here's the thing. Uh, it's a reprinting of a shirt that I had 30 years ago from the In Utero album. Right. I'm like, oh, shit, I love that T-shirt. I'm going to buy it. And then I'm in I'm in the line, and I check out. I'm like, wait, this is classic rock now, isn't it? This is like when I was a kid and I was wearing a Doors T-shirt. Yeah. Like, they're reprinting Nirvana shit. Yeah. Ugh. Yeah, we've got a, a classic rock station here. And uh, it, I was just flipping around the channels to try to find something. That wasn't it wasn't any of that electronica kids bullshit, you know, like an old man does. As I'm mm-hmm, mumbling, yeah. I'm like, oh, this doesn't spider. This is, I don't like this. I get, I understand people like it, but it's not for me. And I just hit search, and uh, it was, um, yeah, I think it was in bloom was on yeah. and I was like, all right, some real music. And then I, then it finished and I'm singing along and I'm driving and I'm having a good time. And then it finishes is like 100.5 classic rock. And I was like, I'm going to jerk this wheel into a goddamn bridge. And button it. <laughs> I didn't know that it caught up last time that I listened to the radio at a classic rock station and like guns and roses popped up. Cause that was, I still a touch before our time, but not really. Yeah. I was like, oh, Christ, welcome to the jungle is now classic rock. I'm like, now Pearl Jam's right around the corner. Yeah. Yeah, I just wanted to drive my Prius through a skate park. (laughs) (laughs) Fuck you! (laughs) Now that, if that's not a poem by Maya Angelou, it should be. (laughs) Drive my my Prius through a skate park. Possibly just like a Travis Tritt song or something like that. (laughs) That's what's more like it. That's but it wouldn't be my Prius, it'd be this Prius. Yeah, drive this Prius through. <laughs> Just screaming, you don't know what you have! Be gentle on your knees! <laughs> it's terrifying to buy clothing without the wife, because I'm like, I wonder if I screwed up. Why am I having that thought? I'm the one wearing it. <laughs> yep, because she has to walk around with you, I understand. I suppose. But not these days, we're not walking around bucket anywhere. <laughs> Although, yeah, God, it felt so nice yesterday. Just to, literally, I was just like, I could have taken a car, I just I just walked for literally hours and miles. Found this, like, uh, little cafe that I never, or little, like, bar and grill. Yeah. That had a huge courtyard in front. I just sat down and was like, shit, I'm, I'm in the middle of nowhere, I'm wearing a mask, but by myself, sit over here and have some shrimp tacos and a beer and some whiskey. Oh, that's awesome. Just wandering around, like, you know, like you take for granted. Yeah. I hadn't done that pretty much all summer. Well, we took the kids this morning out mm-hmm. for the first time. You, you gave Gideon an axe and told him to throw it, correct? Yeah, well, before that, we went to 
Because because on the weekends, all all of us, all all five of us are just we are brunch kind of people. We are not we're not. Let's get up and have breakfast. We're like let's get up and eventually eat something that resembles a breakfast food. What's that meal that has pork and booze and it's roughly noon? <laughs> I don't know, but they serve it in heaven. That's. <laughs> but so we went downtown because we. And I've, I think I've talked about it on the show. I know I told you about Boozy Brunch, where yeah. uh, the streets already closed off to work yeah. as a patio, and the Moxo Cafe is is open across or Cafe Moxo. Um, somebody just screamed. Whoever lives in Springfield that no, they just <laughs> screamed at their phone. Um, but Cafe Moxo, and they've got a couple other vendors that are serving mixed drinks, and then uh, Buzz Bombs open, and a couple other shops. And uh, also, Whimsy Tea is open downtown now, nice. who features uh, a, a fantastic up-and-coming young artist named Larry and Smith. you as well. Yeah, also me, yes, yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I still want my bag of goddamn tea with that bastard you drew on the phone. I know, I gotta get to, I, I'm just telling you, I gotta get to FedEx, because <laughs> every day I'm like, I need to go over to FedEx. Uh, I'm gonna have a sandwich first, and that's... <laughs> How far is this FedEx from you? Oh, man. It's a good maybe 10-minute drive. You son of a lazy bitch. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, that's bad when you're calling me lazy. I know that's... <laughs> hey, man, I would walk about. Mostly because I'm like, that's the last day I'm going to walk for months and months. Yeah. What, what was... Taking the kids down there, I, all of us still... We're like, oh, oh my God, we're out in public. Mm -hmm. And then we're like, okay, we are, like, the closest other human being is 20 feet away. And um, the Sid, who's bartending at uh, Buzz Bomb, who bartends at Buzz Bomb, she's awesome. She walked down and she's like, hey, I've got an extra table. And do you want to just set the, because we were trying to set up at a couple of the barrels that they've got. Yeah. And she's like, let me... Just help me drag out table and chairs. And uh, she looked at Glenn. She goes, are you 21? And he goes, not yet. And, and she's like, don't tell anybody. Come in and grab chairs. <laughs> and, and he's I'm like, pretty sure that's not something they're going to give anybody the goddamn chair for. No, but but no. she she wanted to just give him a hard time. Yeah, she, yeah, yeah. So first she was like, hey, are you Larry's oldest kid? And because uh, and, Sid's in her 20s. She's not much older than Glenn. Mm. And, which... That hurt. Does that, speaking of old man shit, um, the fact that my favorite bartender in Springfield is not much older than my son. <laughs> I'm just, we should end the, we need to end this because I need to go shoot myself. Excellent. Um, no, do it, do it on mic. <laughs> you know what? Do it. Be the be most popular episode. Do you think we could possibly get rid of the picture of me giggling and with a dildo strapped, like <laughs> just put in your face? Yeah. I don't know. The picture of me is out with a dildo strapped on. Let me, I'm not sure why I said that. I, I don't know sure. either, but you know what? We're going with it. Here, I got something for you. Sorry. I'll change it. There we go. Perfect. Yeah. That's just me drunk with uh, hair that was really, really tall. Now it's just really, really long. Yeah. yeah that works. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> looks, looks like a Doc Brown on an ether binge <laughs> in his 40s. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. It, Doc Brown walked into the wrong room in a Thailand whorehouse. <laughs> That's the look of a man that goes, now I remember where I put the Sharpie. We're going to need to wash this. <laughs> <laughs> well, I thought I had colon cancer. Turns out, I just had well, a good I time. I, I know I had colon cancer, but I also remember now I need a pocket protector. Because <laughs> I'm putting these pens in the wrong places. <laughs> Just because it works doesn't mean you should do it. You know what I mean? Well, I got the I got a, a purple sharpie behind my ear. I got I gotta have all the color. I got an orange one behind the other ear. I I don't have anywhere else to put the red one. But here we go, and that's why I work pantsless. So your favorite bartender uh, could be your daughter. Uh, if I yeah, probably. I mean, mm -hmm. technically, because she's like I said in her twenties, and if I had started. Even younger than I did. Well, uh, medically, good. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, she was just looked. At, she's like, "Oh, you're, you're his oldest," and he's like, "Yeah." She goes, "He tells a lot of jokes about you." <laughs> he's like, <laughs> "Yeah, I've heard him." Yeah. And she's like, "You 21?" And he's like, "No, no, no, 
no. <laughs> and she's like, I don't tell anybody. Go in and grab some damn chairs. <laughs> She's like, oh god! Back when you were nineteen, when bartenders were like this, like unthinkable, awesome thing that you're yeah. terrified of, especially like a cute twenty-year-old bartender at like a groovy little place. Mm-hmm. Oh god! Back before life just kicked you right in the nuts over and over again. Yeah. Well, and then yeah, after that we went axe throwing, and uh, oh, so cool. The the so Glenn had to work, so he takes off. So it's just the four of us, and. uh <laughs> it starts out Gideon's like he likes the throwing stars and they have actually the the little throwing uh cards like playing cards. I have a deck of those. Yeah. Well, I I have a the royal flush of one of them. Yeah. yeah. And so he likes those. So he's throwing those and um the owner she brought over after a while some like some of the smaller tomahawks. Not like the tactical ones but like wood handle with the smaller heads. Not quite as heavy, they throw faster. God, I really hate the fact that I'm completely keeping up with you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I know you are, and the reason I'm even... I knew I didn't have to describe it to you. I know. But yeah. for listeners, uh, I know. in case they don't, because uh, there's a lot of people that see a hatchet and go, Oh, a tomahawk. Nope, no. that's a hatchet. Or they see a hatchet and go, Oh, it's an axe. Mm, no. Nope. Mm-mm, no, it's not. So uh, Knowledge we should not possess. Anyway, so, <laughs> so the kids got throwing stars. Apparently. So kids throw, throw th- throwing cards. And just whipping them. And Willow's trying to find the right balance. She gets the tomahawk and she starts sinking them. And that's when she turned around and she goes, let's start keeping score. <laughs> <laughs> She's got it dialed in. And so we played. In the first round, I won. Um, the second round, she eked it out. Um, like, I had a couple bad throws. Mm. And then we were coming up towards the end of the time. And what was cool is the owner, uh, God, I wish I remember her name, but the owner was like, she's like, you guys didn't have to rush that last game. You could have finished it out if you were trying to get, um, trying to get a winner. And we were like, no, we're just doing a tiebreaker. And I'll tell you, we did the best out of five throws and she came close. I I eked it out, but they, uh, the owner, she's like, we do have a trophy. So if you guys want to play for points, whoever wins, Gets this awesome trophy and it's worth it. And so, God, I left it upstairs. I was going to bring it down and show you. Um, but she, she's like, oh, who won? And of course, every, the, the Nick and the kids were like, of course he did. And she's like, yeah, that makes sense. And then she's like, here's your trophy. And it's this little, like, stress squeezy of a Viking holding an axe. And on his <laughs> shield, it says real axe, axe throwing. And uh, Willow, when I hold it up, Willow goes, hey, that even looks like you. (laughs) And the lady's like, yeah, we modeled it after his likeness. And I looked at her and I said, and that's why my lawyers will be in contact soon. (laughs) We're going to have to work out a deal. (laughs) You gave me a bunch of sharp shit and you've appropriated my likeness, you whore. (laughs) How dare you? I want a sponsorship. (laughs) Well, since we didn't get to it last time, pal, uh, what is the... uh... What is the topic du jour that we're ignoring? Ah, uh, yes, I have two. I have two. You uh, always have two. Good man. I, uh, I'm going to send you a link, and we're going to go through this. Ah, okay. I, uh... Bam! Damn it, bam! Uh, can you tell that my tooth fell out again? Because I have a slight list. I hadn't, uh, I hadn't noticed it at all. Um, I mean, I say that out of politeness because I'm Midwestern. <laughs> <laughs> you you, yeah, you look like David Letterman took a hard right hook. <laughs> Perfection. You look like Madonna from the eighties. <laughs> On a good day, unfortunately yeah. for me. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> like, uh, well, that was good like for a... the air, wasn't it? Me just snurfling my my allergy <laughs> snurf. <laughs> okay, so we've got. Can I say this out loud? Yeah, to, to, we're gonna we're gonna run through these. These weird Halloween costumes are perfect for any pandemic. Oh, don't so, don't read oh, any of the to, rest of it no, out loud. Right, right, right. Just just caught myself before I did. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. I'm gonna just scroll down, and we're gonna go to the first one, right? Yep. The idea number okay. one. So, oh, Christ in a basket. <laughs> so at what point? At, well, Jesus, Lord. So, now, you know what? And again, this is just going to totally fall into age becoming a thing. 
And it's basically a cliche right now. But at what point did Halloween turn into women dressed like whores all the time? I don't know, but I'm not ungrateful for it. Uh, see, I used to care a lot more. I mean, I'm dead from the soul down. We both know this. Sure. We, yeah, we're fine with it. But now it's just like you can, make, you can put the word sexy in front of anything. I don't even know if it's on here, but I just watched last night's SNL and sexy hand sanitizer was one of the things that were and it's like I think Colin Joe's joke was sexy hand sanitizer isn't that just lube <laughs> we uh, we started watching it last night we we right. we watched uh um the first the the cold open and then Bill uh Bill Burr's uh, uh monologue which apparently some people really hated uh, I can see where people would either love or hate that son of a bitch. Uh, well, uh, but not him. Well, he is, a, yeah. But the, that monologue, mm -hmm. he kind of went balls out after a whole bunch of people, and he knew he was losing the crowd at one point. But instead of pulling it back, he just muscled through. Well, and but that's what he's always like. If yeah. you watch any of his hours, he spends yeah. the first twenty to thirty minutes burying himself. Just mm -hmm. digging a hole and then gleefully jumping to the bottom of it. And then everyone comes around the hole and they look and they're like, what the fuck is he doing in that hole? And then you watch him crawl his way out. And then he gets out on the other side and everyone goes, all right, you're not a bad guy. Look at him. Look what he did there. I love Burr, but that premise does not really work for, for a, a network show in five minute chunks. No. No. <laughs> not a great call. Look at that. This is that's the sound of you choking on your own tongue. <laughs> yeah, it sure is. Oh, yeah. So the first the first costume uh, should I say it or do you want to? I want to say this one. Go for it. Sexy plague doctor. Awful. So it's a woman dressed as a prostitute. <laughs> so it's just a black lingerie with uh with fish Nets, fishnets and, and uh, thigh high boots thigh high boots and some manner of cloak she does have the hat and well, the, you don't really need the hat the, the long nose mask. mask yeah That's from the black plague doctors wore that for some reason they thought that it was protecting them from something well what they would do them. because the the stench was so bad they would so yeah. that long nose the beak they would shove full of like herbs and rose petals Ooh. was that the thinking behind it okay and it would keep the um keep the stench Okay, that makes sense. Oh, sure. Um, or at least help prevent from having to breathe it in too much. Okay. Uh, I like that she's carrying a scepter with the like the little winged doctor symbol. I think uh -huh. that's great. Because hey, nothing I... says sexy to me like piles of rotting corpses. Oh, God. And okay, her labia is almost peaking. It's coming out the side of one of those. Also, she has what appears to be a working lantern in her hand. Yeah, I have noticed that 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 onesie she's wearing. Mm -hmm. um, I'm a little disappointed because it would not keep my balls in if I wanted to wear that. But what does really? <laughs> What's great? What, I, what, I what did show this. What the tie of your balls if they get aggressive? <laughs> and the older I get, the worse it gets. Mm -hmm. They just want some air, damn it! I did show this to Glenn, <laughs> and he, I showed this to Glenn, and he's like, "Damn it! Well, I guess I got to return this costume to to." What he said, I think he said, I gotta return this costume to Adam and Eve. <laughs> well, that's the thing, too. Because you know that this is just cheap as crap. Like, it's gonna, like, fall the hell apart. Yeah, it's only good for, like, one or two fuck sessions. <laughs> only good for one if you're doing it right. Yeah, it's so, one. It's good for, so for one making love sesh and one fuck sesh. So for me, we have that for years and years. Mm -hmm. It's gonna be just fine. I'm accidentally treating everything really gently because that's all I got left. <laughs> yeah, and I, I, when Nicole and I have sex, it looks like Lenny petting a bunny. <laughs> Her safe word is. <laughs> and your safe word is harder, you pussy. Harder. <laughs> Make me feel what something. I'm, anything. What I'm, what I'm saying is, we don't require it. <laughs> <laughs> if your safe word is, that's all right. You know, you're not doing something right. Yeah. It's not, it's not 50 shades of anything. <laughs> what it's, I, it's, it's, I used to try to do this bit. Uh, and I kind of let it go, so that's why I'm not too... 
but I, I used to say that that uh, guys think that the worst sound they can hear uh, when they take off their pants is a woman giggling, and I think uh, that that may be true. But I think the the like second runner up is oh, <laughs> look at him like a like a three legged kitten with with a head injury walked into the room wearing a sweater. <laughs> Now, this is going to sound like lip service. I don't have that issue. I'm actually, for my height, I'm doing just fine down there. The problem is, is that I just I don't care enough to do anything with it anymore. I've got the tools. I just don't want to, you know, build the birdhouse. I don't give a damn. <laughs> and now, it's like, you know, pull my hair. I'm like, no, because I might throw my back out. Jesus Christ. <laughs> you know I've got the trick shoulder. I can't do that. <laughs> Now just let uh, just let me lay here and take a nap. You do what you got to do. I'm trying to read my book. <laughs> All right, let's the next. Let's one. Yeah, we don't even need to talk about the next one. The, the next one, I have to. Mm, I mean, we have to say what it is just because we said the next one. Yeah. It's Joe Exotic. Okay, fine. I mean, this is in stupid poor taste. He's got actually the guy in. So the guy who's wearing this, he looks. Like the kind of guy who would buy this and think that he's going to be the only one at the party with this on. Oh, absolutely. 100%. <laughs> and he's looking at himself in the mirror like, I'm going to get laid tonight. Yeah. Uh-huh. What, what is this? It's not even a costume. It's a mullet wig. He's got a, a, a plush tiger on his shoulder. I got to be honest. This looks a lot like how I dressed in 1992. It's really close. Yeah. It's really close. I mean, you've rocked that mustache before. <laughs> I did. Yeah, you rock, but, but but it was more. But when you did it, though, in all fairness, it was more like Tombstone. It was more like uh, it was more cowboy yeah. than um, than man tickler. It was more. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a guy in a, in a long sleeve, you know, puffy, sparkly shirt, which a, is again circa nineteen ninety eight. Um... Actually, you might down to the plastic pistol. You might have this somewhere. Um, I could dig that with the, the work boots and everything. Seriously, mm -hmm. this with the, the long curly blonde hair coming out from underneath the trucker cap. Uh, actually, the more I look at this, I see why you want to just gloss right past it because this is you. Yeah. This is the way you looked when I met you. Yeah, that's <laughs> whatever the hell year that was from the 1996, the, the torso of a, uh, a of a, uh, a, 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 a club party monster, uh, sexually ambiguous party monster, and then the from the waist down, just just cowboy, and from the the neck up, just just questionable redneck. Yeah, <laughs> and, and this picture smells like Axe body spray, and I'm not sure how that's possible. You know what this? <laughs> I was still rocking the uh, the Stetson at that time. The oh god, Stetson, Stetson cologne. God. Uh, smell like a hat. You know what this reminds me of, honestly? This is in the same... This is in slightly better, honestly, taste than... Remember when Steve Irwin died and everybody thought it'd be really funny to walk around with, like, a crocodile hunter outfit with, like, a, a, a plastic stingray attached to their chest? Uh-huh. And yeah. then you go out to the bar and, like, you're one of nine assholes with that. Like, you're all going home by yourselves. Yeah. Nicole has always been really grateful that she and I did Harley and the Joker long mm -hmm. before that was a popular costume. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Because we were just nerds. Yeah. And uh, it, was, it was before the the DC movies came out. It was before every girl dressed up like Harley Quinn. Mm -hmm. She and I put together... I she, she actually had to go spend money on hers. I had a black wig... Uh, like long black wig that I chopped up and then spray painted green, like the hair coloring. Mm -hmm. um, and then shaved off my beard, did all the makeup. I had went to Goodwill and found like a purple suit jacket. Nice. And I had been in a, a wedding on a, on a St. Patrick's day. And so I had a green vest with a green tie and then found some, some kind of dark purple pants and just wore some dress shoes. Yeah. And it was a rad costume. And she had to actually go hunt stuff down for her costume. But she still she still has it. And it's great. <laughs> Does it make an appearance every once in a while? 
I have birthdays. <laughs> <laughs> what a year. <laughs> At least. At Although, least. With, with the way I drink, I think I have about three a year. <laughs> <laughs> That's how you know you're really getting old. Could we do my birthday this year? <laughs> Calm down, Grandpa. <laughs> well, could we do it early? Because I may not make it. All right, I'm going to scroll past Joe, because I just want to... the fuck is that? That is Leafy Superwoman costume. The Although I Leafy like that it says costume. It does. It says Leafy Superwoman costume. Uh, costume. Yeah, sure does. And this is some random... It's pot a pot costume. costume. Yeah. It's a random pot whore. Okay. <laughs> Look, I'm we're sex positive in this house. Uh, it's a random uh, pot sex worker. Thank you very much. Fine, whatever. No, this nobody. Nobody listening this. to this show cares. No, good point. No, it's just so she's got a green wig on, and there's the same cape basically they're just repurposing it from the uh, sexy plague doctor yeah and it's just random black and green pot leaves everywhere of course there's a couple of pot leaves right on the nipples so yeah. i feel fine saying it's super pot war and a green wig that is the antithesis of clever yeah and i guarantee you that costs 60 bucks at party tree <laughs> yes god damn it Let's. Uh, wait. So what does it say? No, Leafy Superwoman. <laughs> leafy Superwoman. They didn't even try at the name. No. They didn't even attempt a pun. No. It's like uh, because they didn't want to put Super Pot for on the goddamn bag for the thing. Is one heroine who isn't in the Marvel or DC cinematic universes, but this costume will smoke out compliments from a certain percentage of the population. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I mean... Yeah, but do you really want those compliments from that part of the population? No, it's the same people that think Rita Rudner's still funny. It's just like... <laughs> <laughs> wow, we are not helping the f like the image of us being just grumpy old men at this point. When... She's terrible. Well, I'm just saying... She's still alive? I don't even know. Because just we just I mentioned Rita Rudner, and anyone that's even barely below our uh, uh, below the 40 is like, I don't know who that is. Could someone get Pop Pop and, and Uncle Zig back to the home? They done no, wandered off, and they they don't have pants again. I miss that Elaine Boozler. That's <laughs> who I miss. Actually, I did like her, but she was from the 80s. She was yeah. like Seinfeldian. Yeah, Elaine Boozler was uh, was awesome. She's actually when when regardless of I hate the whole well who's your favorite comedian? Well, who's your favorite female comedian? No, I just have the same thing. Yeah, yeah. It's just, there's a category. Like I uh, Elaine Boozler is in the top 10. Taylor Tomlinson is in the top 10. Not familiar, I don't think. Um she has a special on Netflix. Um her I think she did a I became familiar with her Starting on Last Comic Standing, you know, the hoax show. Um, uh -huh. That's Dave Schumer, her uh, career. Uh, but she had started out like 16 doing um, church stand up at church. Wait, she's, she's not Australian, is she? No, no. I'm thinking of somebody else. Okay, never mind. And when she did Last Comic Standing, she was like, I don't want you to bill me as the clean, young female comic. That does church shows. And they're like, yeah, we won't do that. Of course, that's what they did. Right. So she was stuck trying to do clean jokes. Um, and But yeah, she uh, she did a, a, I think it was a Comedy Central 15 minute set that was brilliant. And I had seen her on Last Comic Standing. I was like, wow, she's really good. Um, oh, she's 20, I think at the time, like 22. She's been doing it since she was 16. Obviously, she's going to be good. She's had some... She's got some chops. And mm -hmm. then just last year, she got um, her first Netflix special. Oh, and cool. Holy shit. Obviously, um, there's stuff in there that, uh, you know, there's stuff about being a 20-some-year-old woman where I'm like, okay, I don't get it, but I look over at Nicole and she's cracking up. 
Yeah, fair. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, that's fine. But for the most, like 99.9% of it, sh- I'm laughing so hard. She's so good. She's just so good. So that's my weekly recommendation for comics <laughs> I'd like to open for. <laughs> this is me sucking up and kissing ass right <laughs> on the old b-hole. <laughs> that's actually, I... Uh, yeah, I talk. Uh, Nicole and I talk a lot about that. When you get like comics that are on Facebook, they're like, "This guy's great." Hey, man, great job! I watch your Netflix special. I'm a comic too. I'm like, just offer to suck the taint and and be done with it. Cause good God, you f- uh, just be good. Just be good and work hard. And guess what? You don't have to. It, it doesn't always work out for people that are good and work hard. I know that. I know some people that are really good and work really hard, and they've just not gone very far. But it, you don't get very far by s- being a, an obvious suck ass. Oh boy, we hit a nerve. Pop pop. Yeah, we did. Pop pop's right. had some whiskey. Pop pop, you okay? I was just trying to figure out the, the whole logistics of sucking a taint. It just seems like the one of the most difficult places to put a hickey. Not if you believe in yourself. Well, that's why I'm never going to be able to do it. Put more whiskey in my drink. Whiskey, whiskey. Oh, presidential pick-me-up costume. What the fuck is... Oh, god damn it. See, now, this kind of shit drives me up the wall. Because whoever is doing this shit thinks they're clever. Yeah. Now... So it's a it's a picture of so it's basically an inflatable Donald Trump, and whoever's in the costume is like uh, put their head through it. So the whole idea is that it's a it's a woman who is uh, like in front of Trump, and Trump's got his hand around her, groping the breast, and then you are like the woman's head. But I'm yeah, and it looks like her. he's carrying I'm... the woman away, which we know is ridiculous because that man can barely carry himself around, much less another human being. Well, there's another reason to hate it. I mean, it's it's not that I like Trump. I detest him. He is, I used to think that he is the literal antichrist, but he's not that smart. He's basically a B-rate Bond villain who is being written out of the sequel. But this, whoever came up with shit like this, and they're making money off of it, obviously. Oh, yeah. But it's just like, uh, and it's inflatable, so and it's cheap. So, you know, at some point, you're going to be walking around with your inflatable boobs and the inflatable Trump head, and he's just going to start slowly leaking. <laughs> and not, that could be fun, just like you're being carried around by a Trump that's melting directly well, behind you. At that point, when the head is half caved in, you just tell everybody, no, no, it's Kennedy. <laughs> See, that's clever. It's... That's clever, God damn it! Yeah, I get paid to, <laughs> to tell jokes to people. And, uh, and, I mean, I used to. I'm yeah, so right. sad. I'm so sad all the time. That was the point. At some point, I was paid. To th- I remember back in the day when I was paid to tell jokes to people. <laughs> and you know that the stinks like, like those. Um, remember when we were kids? I wonder if they still make them. Those inner tubes you got at the dollar store, and you t- you open up the package, it smells like plastic. But they had that weird seam around the outside that would just cut you like paper cuts. <laughs> yes. Oh. God damn it, those things were horrible. Yeah. And they lasted a day. Yep. They were terrible and dangerous. And then you got yelled at because you weren't careful enough with your stuff. Yeah, it's just it's like, it's broken. I'm bleeding from a thousand tiny wounds. I look like a cutter, for Christ's sake. You threw me into the river, so I guarantee I got something. <laughs> Daddy never loved me. Daddy never loved me. I'm cutting myself in small little nicks on the goddamn inner tube, and it has that stink. <laughs> uh, Where's right. Daddy getting back from getting smokes? <laughs> I don't know. The next presidential debate. <laughs> Let's see. What's the next one? Yeah, you get to read this one. Cat owner. Wait, what is this? Cat owner role reversal costume. Oh fuck you! We promise it's not a sex thing. It's a <laughs> so hold on. So this is. <laughs> I'm just picturing the person who's wearing this and taking their cat to a party. Or possibly just putting this on on Halloween and scaring children trying to give out candy by throwing it off the porch so that they can socially distance. It's like, here, catch the butternut. So, uh, butternut? So you ex- yeah, from the squash. The butternut. 
water pick. That's what I do. I throw I throw <laughs> fall time squash at children. Those things are dense, man. You can get some do some damage. Yeah, even the small ones, a two pounder, you can really. Yeah. You, you know the uh, the slingshots you shoot water balloons out of. Yeah. Fuck you. Here comes an acorn squash. <laughs> and you need three people to do it. <laughs> So this is basically, it's literally just, it's a woman, and she has a hood on, so that she looks like a cat. And, but, and then there's a little hood that she has put over an actual cat, so the cat looks like a person. So it's role reversal, heads on cats. Now, in their defense, well, this is more sad than anything, in their defense... She's just wearing a t-shirt, which I do like. Yeah. Like, she's not, like, for some reason in a spiked bra carrying around her cat <laughs> in a goddamn hood. At least it's not sexy cat owner role reversal costume. All she has to do is just take this off and walk around in her bra and a sexy cat. <laughs> but uh, I just picture that whoever would purchase this torturing their feline, <laughs> wandering around in public. Like, see, look. Look, I'm the caddy. She's the person. <laughs> you don't go next to that person. You walk away from them in the store. <laughs> this episode brought to you by, hold on, Loving Friends Kitty Cuddle Costumes. Roll reversal. Would you like to tell the whole world that you're always going to be single? Loving Friends <laughs> Kitty Cuddle Costumes. Hey, have you ever dreamed of dressing your cat up like a shitty furry? Roll reversal. <laughs> Did you write this? No. <laughs> well, I was going to say, did you write this just in response to what I was about to say? Because <laughs> that'd be brilliant. <laughs> I just, just, uh, just reading the copy for our, our new, uh, our, <laughs> our new sponsor, Loving uh -huh. Friends Kitty Cuddle Costumes. Do you cry a lot alone in your apartment? <laughs> Sober. <laughs> Have you ever split a can of cat food with your special friend? <laughs> oh, God. All right, let's move on, before I... <laughs> Yeah, that's fine. Where, where now, did this copy come from? I'm, I'm, I, don't, I just made it up. No, oh, it looked like you were reading. I'm sorry, it literally looked like you were reading. I was, I was reading the label on the phone. Ah, very good. Yeah, because I wanted to make sure I got it right, since it's our new sponsor, Loving Friends, the Kitty Cuddle <laughs> Costumes. Gee, God damn it. She does horrible things to that cat. <laughs> I'm sorry about your dad. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry about your dad. <laughs> now, I think you're going to like this next one, though. Huh. I was not prepared. Okay, well, I... Okay, so now I'm going to sound like a hypocrite because of my disdain for the Trump thing. <laughs> but this, this is one of those, delightful. This is another one of the... Actually, you know, there's some logistics nightmares that I need to talk about with this one. So what we have here is Comrade Putin, is what they're calling it. And so the costume is... Is that... How do you describe... Uh, Larry, how do you describe this? Well, it's a... Uh, it looks like kind of an inflatable or plush version uh -huh. of of uh, Vladimir Putin. Mm -hmm. And uh, mm -hmm. they're making fun of the fact that Vladimir Putin is not very tall. Right. Um, so they've got him in his little suit. And he's looking like he's he's giving you a piggyback ride. Or a, a shoulder ride. Not a piggyback ride. A shoulder ride. So you're sitting on... Tiny Putin's strong, broad shoulders, right with your nuts nestled up <laughs> to the nape of his neck. Yeah, somewhere in there. I mean, who hasn't fantasized about that at least three times? Today? Not me. <laughs> well, you're doing it now. You're behind quota, comrade. You can't tell. I've been touching myself this whole episode. <laughs> so here's the thing. And the, the guy, guy is on his shoulder carrying an AK-47. AK-47 with a scope, but he's just wearing a gray t-shirt. And, like, that's it. Yeah. Like, I feel like you really just lost the opportunity to do something with that. Right. Plus, the way that tiny little Putin is... You see where it's like, so this guy's legs are obviously the legs of Putin, so you can walk around, yeah. and then his, in air quotes, legs are around him. But does it look like the material is going to have your knees too close to each other? You're going to be like duck walking all night. Which I think probably sell, helps sell the joke. 
<laughs> Maybe. Because he's got his tiny little midget legs running. What I'd like to point out, though, is if you yeah. are... If you are under 21 and you're going to a an under 21 boozy booze party, don't wear this costume because you ain't running anywhere. Oh, you are not. You are not. I think the, the actor, the actor, the model who's holding the plastic AK, he's got that look on his face that this is like, I don't, I, look at me, I just bagged my first deer. Like, I don't know what that looks like. He looks, looks like. like, I can't believe my parents spent Eighty thousand dollars on acting school for me. He looks like he just got fourth place at a four H fair, and he's proud of it. <laughs> oh, it, it, he looks like his he his dad finally let him watch watch the the horses make a baby. <laughs> And he's holding up his plastic gun. All right, you know what? I, I do have to admit, this one I, I kind of like. I knew you would like that one. This one I kind of like. And not just because of my pen shots with little people. But it doesn't hurt. Yeah. Okay, let's keep scrolling. Uh, no. This, you know what? Because here's the problem with this one. So this one is Moon Man. Moon Man is literally a cheap astronaut's costume but the butt is cut out and i'm so, guessing that's a plastic yeah it's a plastic button that which makes you an ass turn not uh, okay sure sure <sighs> i don't like this one at all because if you're gonna do it don't be a pussy about it let your real ass stick out well there's that and i might have a in the right context, like this would be the kind of thing in Key West or New Orleans, I think would be just fine. Absolutely. You know, know your audience, you know what I mean? Yeah, if you're down at Fantasy Fest and you want to go yeah. as a moon man, by all means, no one's going to say a, no one's going to bat an eye because there's four other moon men walking around and they're doing something about it. And this is just like, the picture is just like, A, that's weird because it's a woman. I think that's a woman. It doesn't really matter. It's it's hard to tell the gender of the person on the side. They but are they holding their hand up like they're like, oh, you caught me. It's like, yeah, tee hee. But this is also the costume that you're... Some people are going to get it, but since most people are stupid, you're going to have to explain it several times, which is going to kill the joke. Also, for reasons I can't really explain, apparently boots are not involved in this because this woman is wearing, like, nurse's shoes. Yeah, like, she's just wearing out. some white New Balance. <laughs> straight up white kids, man. No, I think it's just like our support all day. Yeah, those look like uh, those. <laughs> those look like some LA gears that you'd pick up at uh, at Walmart back in in eighty <laughs> seven. Did, did you? <laughs> the first sentence of the blurb. Oh, the hilarity of it all. Yeah. Period. Period. Not even exclamation mark. They're not even trying. Yeah. Oh, the hilarity of it all. Same thing you say when you look at a dumpster fire of tires. <laughs> Let's go to the next one. Okay. What do we got here? We got, okay, Canadian Mountie. It's a sexy Mountie. Yeah, I'm into this one. Uh, well, you know what? I will say it is sexy. And again, you sound so old. But she's not showing skin. I dig it. Yeah, It's buttoned from the neck all the way mm -hmm. down. She's got long pants. The only thing, quote unquote, sexy might be the high heeled boots. But even if she was wearing flats, <clears throat> like mm -hmm. like flat, I would I would be into it. This costume does it for me the, the, for the same reason that I have the the English Siri voice on my phone because <laughs> forceful. Okay. Forceful yet polite, authoritative yet caring, and I—that's what does it for me. I feel like in, sometime in your sex life in the past, you've worn a saddle and you were loving it. Uh, yeah. Don't don't, don't tell me if I'm wrong or right. I don't want to know. <laughs> don't ruin whatever I'm doing right now. <laughs> no, you know I, I, I'm a fan of I do thigh high, high heel boots. Yeah. Yeah, man. Yeah, uh, that's a thing. Yeah, this is... she's. How many of these are... She is on? saluting with the wrong hand. That bothers me. Uh, that is true. But... Uh, 
a, I, I, mm-hmm. I was about to just make a judgment on this human being who I've never met before. Or it was going to be about her being stupid. Well, I mean, but let's move on. I mean, if if Nicole got that, we would be calling her the Royal Mounted Police. Oh, dad jokes. Dad jokes about banging your wife. <laughs> Jesus, dude. The ultimate dad joke. I've told you that. Oh, did I tell you? Gideon and I were playing a uh, video. This has been, God, I think a year ago. Before we uh, moved all the setup upstairs, we were down here in the Danger Dungeon. Mm-hmm. And we we're playing Call of Duty, and I keep. He's like, I want to go one on one. I want to go one on one. I was like, that's cool. And I just keep killing him. I just keep killing him. I just keep killing him. And he, we're we're laughing, we're trash talking, and he gets comfortable, right? And he goes, Oh, you motherfucker! And I just let it go. I didn't want to say anything because I'm like, I'm not a hypocrite, you know. He hears me say, he hears me curse. Yeah. He wasn't calling you that. Yeah, he just was like, well, oh, he was. Yeah. video game. Yeah, but it yeah. wasn't with like if he were if he were ang- it's different with he's angry and like you yeah. motherfucker. Then that's that's different. But he's just like, oh, you motherfucker, and we and he you could just see color drain out of his face. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like his eyes get white. He doesn't say anything. I'm smirking, and I, I and he <laughs> he comes around a corner. I blast him again. And he starts to take a deep breath, and I leaned in without looking at him, and I went, technically, I'm a step motherfucker. And then I <laughs> just went back to playing, and he was just like, oh, God, oh, I mean, I, uh, God damn it. Okay. <laughs> and I was like, gotcha. I win. I, you know that moment when you said something, you're like, oh, God, is this going to play? I don't know. Uh-huh. Yeah. Well, like I said, I probably let... I, I know other other parents that would probably be like, hey, watch your mouth. And in certain situations, I'm like, hey, watch your mouth. But in, sometimes when he's just like, so when, he, when he gets frustrated, like he, he and I hang in drywall a couple weeks ago yeah. and he missed the stud. So he's doing it over his head. First time he wants mm-hmm. to try and he misses the, the rafter. He goes, that is a motherfucker moment. Yeah. yeah. And he goes, Ving! and misses and he goes, oh, God damn it. And then you looked at me, I was like, no, that's a goddamn it moment, go for yeah, it. Yeah, no, you used, you used it correctly, yeah, that's yeah. fine. I was like, you've you've been helping me all morning, and every time I'm doing I'm like, ah, oh, motherfucker, yeah, I'll get this son of a bitch, and I'm just, mm-hmm. it's like, son, we're working construction, essentially. You yeah. can say whatever you want. We're not, no. we're, we're not going to be upset. No, and he's he's old enough now he, that he knows context. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, like that's not something that you say to the lady who just brought you your pancakes at Denny's. He gets it. He knows that. I I want to skip ahead because I want to make sure okay. we do everything on time. I want you to go down. Okay, so real quick, we're gonna skip past the '80s boombox, past the giraffe jumpsuit. Sure, whatever. The sexy loofah. Sexy loofah. God damn it! That just reeks of the Real Housewives of Who Gives a Fuck. Um, uh, pineapple, pineapple PJs. PJs. I want to get down. Speaking of Gideon, I showed him this one, and he was like, "This is my Halloween costume. Please find it for me." I'm guessing we're talking about Infrared <laughs> Man. Yeah. Okay. Very good. If you scroll down and look at Infrared Man, I just did, and I am. Uh. So it's like if, for the uh, for the listeners. It's like a yeah. morph suit. If everybody knows what a morph suit is, this is usually the solid color suits, and so they sometimes make a, a superhero costumes out of them. This one is infrared man, where it just looks like a dude with a giant dong. It's it, so it's like a dude with a giant dong being looked at by the predator. Yes, and and it, with a with a crank like that, the predator would be like, I think I'm good. I think I'm good. <laughs> no, thank you. That, that is a solid 14 incher. Yeah, uh, which is angrily bright red. Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, he may want to head to the doctor for that one. It's weird. The places on his body that are bright red are not the places that really would be. His forehead, his fingertips, uh, his his chest for some reason, and his wang. I can only <laughs> assume he's gotten COVID, and apparently COVID makes your dick bigger. Now, here's my question, though, because uh, this, uh, is it 3D? Because you can't really tell from the picture. I think it's just on the suit sticking off at an angle. Okay, so at some point in the skin-tight suit, you have to hide your real unit, 
while you're showing off the fact that this huge unit is probably not yours. Also, the balls are ridiculously small, and they're yellow. Yeah. <laughs> that irks me. Yeah, I'm a little bothered by this. We're going to skip over a couple more. We're going to mention Mermaid Man, which is from SpongeBob SquarePants. Okay, I got nothing on SpongeBob. Um, uh, clam, white clam seltzer. You're just a giant can of, not white claw, but white clam. White clam seltzer. And we, uh, we went to spring break to find us some white clam. I'm, I'm sorry, I got mildly... Yeah, you left me hanging on that one, and that's fine. I apologize, that's fine. I, I was, uh, the, people are walking in the room, hold on, what's going on? I, I, <laughs> uh, sorry. White man. Claw, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, I got strict. So what's a salty sea beverage, wait, it, what, white what is this? It's, it's supposed to be White Claw, but it's making fun of it, it's White Clam. And I said, that's right. what, that's what we went to spring break for. Ah, very good. Um, so, is the, is the joke... Wait, this is... It's on, stupid. Yeah. There's no joke. Is it stupid? It's just stupid. Is it making, is it like they're going for a clam joke because women drink these? I don't or know. Or is this just... What are they doing? I'm not stupid and I don't get this goddamn joke. I don't know. But the one right under that. Let's go to the one right under that. Okay, but I, I have to... Give me one more second to hate this. That's... And it says it's in a lime natural slime. That's really dumb. It's a dumb joke. It's a dumb yeah, joke. It's a... Uh, what I love is that the so, photographer, oh! the photographer chose a guy that looks exactly like he should wearing that costume. Mm -hmm. But yeah, a uh, birthday suit. Uh huh. Okay. Now the the her bits are cleverly covered in in sparkles and spangles, mm -hmm. which mm -hmm. I want to be like. Look, if you're gonna do it, just fucking do it, and carry around a real cake. Well, yeah, if this is, if you're going to, so she's got a stupid little, like, one of those cone party hats on. And then she looks mostly naked. Yeah, and then it's just like, it's just like and a, a And she's got a suit. fake birthday cake, which, that's what makes me the angriest. I don't care if you want to show your tits and bush. <laughs> Things not to say at the PTA. <laughs> What's your first one? I don't care if you want to show your tits and bush. Correct. That is the first. But thing. have real cake. That's but what I'm saying. Real cake. <laughs> Welcome to the potluck. I don't care. You, you want to show Bob's and Vagine? Fine. Don't give a rat's ass. Don't give a rat's ass. But you don't. better have a real cake with you. And the way that she's like holding this makes me think that it's cardboard. Like it's not even like no. Like, it's cake. yeah. It's, it's cake. It's it's a cardboard cake, and she doesn't look like she's ever eaten cake, and it all bothers me. Here's the thing, though. Right below that, the blurb is just so your costume is no costume. Yeah, that's it. That's it. Right below that, that's what Kawadi needs. <sighs> don't tell me you does. Tell me she, you don't want it. I don't. I have an issue. Okay, so what we're looking at is doggy werewolf costume. That is something to put on a small dog. Where it wraps around his head. And it looks and like a little werewolf. Looks like a werewolf. He looks like a little werewolf. Uh, I don't... I have a it's real mental adorable. block. It's adorable. I have a real mental block with putting clothes on animals. I have a tiny chihuahua who does shiver a lot. He's 10 years old, for Christ's sake. Yeah. So he does have sweaters for the winter. You know what I mean? Uh -huh. I broke down last year and I bought him like this... Um, uh, uh, it's a... It's a cowboy outfit so he looks like he's the uh, the horse and he's got a cowboy in the back uh -huh. but the, i i cut a few of the little strings holding the, the hat on it's because the guy the cowboy's got a ha uh, his hand in the air so when the dog walks around the hat like flails <laughs> <laughs> and i took a couple of videos of him and i put the betty hilti in the back <laughs> <laughs> and as much, yeah, exactly. And as much as I hate to admit it, it made me so happy. <laughs> this is what I'm saying. I, let's see, and that's I don't have a problem putting clothes like Zoe. I, Zoe loves her sweater. She loves wearing her sweater. Does she need it? She's a short haired dog, I guess. She's a short haired dog. She um it, when it starts getting real chilly out and she still wants to, I mean, she still likes going for walks. We just take her for shorter walks in the winter. Yeah. Um, but we'll throw her sweater on just to make sure that she, she stays okay, which yeah. I'm sure she would be cause she's fat as fuck, but 
she also she likes her sweater. When she sees her sweater, she comes over to put it on. And that's why I've told you I've told you about Dave. The dog named Dave mm -hmm. that I'm yeah, gonna adopt. Gonna wear a Hawaiian shirt. Yeah. We're just gonna wear matching shirts and sunglasses. And I'll I'll find Dave one day. One day. He's he's he just you're gonna know when you see him. Yep. yep. I'm, I'm gonna see Dave and I'm like, fuck, I guess we got a second dog. It's a dog that knows what he's about. You like high life? Oh, stag? You're a stag man? Fucking A. <laughs> fucking A. <laughs> this fucking dog right here. <laughs> the only dog. What's his, what's his own? Does he sit? No. Shake hands? No. Does he do any tricks? He can put on his own sunglasses. <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, shit. Yeah. Draw up the papers. <laughs> <laughs> Done. And he taught himself. He just He's just into it. He's not into doing like all the bullshit, but, you know. <laughs> and he'll pick out the shirts. Oh, shit. <laughs> really? Uh, why, why Why do they throw in this, like, donkey werewolf costume in and amongst all of the horrors and stupid things? It's like, look, big wang, look at my boobs. Oh, here's a really cute little dog. And if you look at the dog, here's my thing about putting goddamn costumes on dogs. I liked the, the, the thing because it, like, wasn't intrusive on him because he has like a, a couple of different vests that we put on him when it's cold he doesn't know the difference right this dog in the werewolf costume because the werewolf is over his head like a hood he looks so goddamn miserable look at this dog and tell me he doesn't look like he wants to kill himself and take you with him <laughs> please end me yeah jesus christ it's a murder suicide <laughs> it's a murder suicide are there any other goodies on here? I mean, there's a sexy salt shaker. Sexy sure, salt shaker. Boner the caveman. That was the other costume Gideon demanded. <laughs> He's like, if I can't have infrared man, I want to be Boner the caveman. Wait a second. And I said, I said that makes sense since the word Boner also means mistake. <laughs> Okay, so this is the kind of thing that a 14-year-old would dig. Yeah. When I was 14, yes, 14 to probably 39, I would think this is hysterical. <laughs> two, two weeks ago. Two weeks ago. It's just a caveman outfit with a huge wang that's underneath like a loincloth. Yeah. But I like the fact that in this photo, they've done one of those like black bars to cover up the wang, but the black bar is see-through. Yeah. Yeah. It's not completely opaque. You can see the wagon balls underneath it. It's like we want to, you know, we want to be tasteful with it, but we still want you to know you're getting a you're getting a plush wagon balls underneath there. <laughs> Ooh! Yeah. Is it plush or is it inflatable? Oh, it's plush. What is the point of the censorship black bar on that which is literally see-through? I don't know. <laughs> Who in the fuck is putting this goddamn page together to sell their horrible, horrible wares? Holy shit. <laughs> I'll be oh, honest, I would man. never have worn that costume. Because I am so self-conscious about everything. Like, yeah. here's the thing. I would not have worn that costume and given some poor girl a false sense of what she might be receiving. <laughs> well, nobody's gonna think. I mean, it's the size of a wiffle ball, Batman. I mean, this just... <laughs> It looks like a downed log. <laughs> it looks like something you grab onto when you're going down the rapids and get dumped out your raft. Give me three dozen of those. I can make you a shelter. We'll get through the winter in Toronto. <laughs> we will. <laughs> we will. We'll figure out ways to lash them all together, but... That's if you could if you can handle felling all of the boner the caveman, we can figure it out. I'm pretty sure a boner the caveman costume comes with every one of those role reversal cat people costumes. Just look, we know you haven't look, we understand. Just have this to cuddle with. And can we hold on? I need to go <laughs> there's still I lost it, so I had to go back through, so I'm scrolling back down looking at all these names. Why is there the one goddamn dog thing who who what idiots dipshit nephew is making hundreds of thousands of dollars a year and like you're in charge of uh, of doing all the names so like and he phoned it in presidential pick me up costume like uh, okay that's one thing and then they're like uh leafy superwoman uh i don't know cat owner role reversal let's see here we go moon man that's and then he just stopped mounty Boombox, giraffe jumpsuit. What is that? 
Oh, it's like a jumpsuit, but you look like a giraffe. Oh, good. Oh. Lufa. Let's see. Uh, pineapple. Infrared man. Mermaid man. Clam seltzer, which I still can't get over. I just want to punch that guy. Oh, God. I realized that I just went down my own little rabbit hole of hatred and what you're showing me right now. <laughs> and then we get to the boner the caveman. It's literally, they're calling it boner the caveman. I do love that. They're just like, I, I don't know, man. Just call it what it is. <laughs> but it doesn't even mean anything. They just put a gigantic wang on a caveman for no reason. Yeah. Uh, okay, I want to. I want you to scroll down to the next one, because I've got a problem with this one, and I, I want to know yeah. if you see the same thing. Okay. Uh, well, we have Bob Ross painting. And it's just called Bob Ross painting, not Ross's, just Bob Ross painting. So obviously the woman is in, I mean, it looks like kind of like an oversized shirt. Yeah. Uh, with a Bob Ross painting on it. But why is she wearing goddamn stripper heels? Because she's a sexy Bob Ross painting. I want to throw obviously. my phone at you. That She's a, she is Bob You're Ross. the reason daddy drinks. You're the reason daddy drinks. I'm not the reason. I'm a reason. <laughs> it's more Jameson. It's an oversized t-shirt. So when she holds her hands out like this, it's like a, a square. Yeah, and then she holds her hands yeah. up. She flashes some beef. And uh, then it's reflected in those stripper heels. There's no reason. Just wear some like Chuck Taylors. Like if it was just, if you were like, what are you? And she held up her hands and she's wearing like some Chuck Taylors and, and some sweatpants. I'd be like, this is fucking rad. You, you and I, we're either going to be best friends or fucking for a while. That's what we're doing. And I mean, yeah, just put on, put on a pair of jeans and like put on a big Afro wig. Be Bob Ross. Yeah. Be Bob Ross just painting. Be the, the embodiment of Bob Ross in a painting. That I'm amazed that they didn't put her in fishnets, to be right. honest. Hey, you want to get real mad? Scroll down one. Sure. What do we got? Oh, screw you and everybody who looks like you. <laughs> We've talked about my hatred of this thing before. Yeah, Fireball. but we and we got sent a lot of that shit at my roast. Because everyone knew uh, I hated it. I don't like Fireball. Sorry, Fireball. Oh. However, if Fireball would like to sponsor us, fuck it. I, I I still wouldn't drink it. We can still roast it for fun. We can, I'm, well, I don't know what you do with it besides, I mean, what is it? It's good for washing down roofies and nothing else. I don't know what the hell that goddamn garbage is for. I'm pretty sure it's just it's just coolant. <laughs> okay. See every year with the shit. Fake news reporter. Look at that. It's just so fake. Here's though. There's that one, only one, real decent costume. Stroll down below, kids pterodactyl. Okay, so there's nothing wrong with this. This is just a kid's costume, and he looks, and he's dressed like a pterodactyl. This is like one of those things that's not like the other. Yeah. This is a perfectly fine costume for a child. But scroll down okay. one more, because this one's <laughs> fucking legit. <laughs> This okay. makes me mad that Nick had her tubes tied because I want to dress a baby. Look, we're having a bu we have a bunch of friends that are having a bunch of kids right now. Let me mm -hmm. borrow all your babies, all your toddler babies. Well, they got to be mobile because I want to dress them up as Stay Puft Marshmallow Men. I want at least six of them, maybe ten little toddlers that I can keep on a rope. They can just be tied together, but I want to send them out, um, like like an like an army. Of Stay Puft Marshmallow Men just running <laughs> at a house. See, the thing with this one is... I'm with you. I'm totally with you. The thing with this one is, A, it's... The kid is a Stay Puft Marshmallow Man from Ghostbusters, which is a movie from the 80s. We're old. B, this kid is selling it. He is running it full bore at the camera, and you just see his punchy little face in just sheer joy as he's going to attack you as the Stay Puft Marshmallow Man. I respect this young and man. And his little fists are balled up. Like, yep. I mean, he's just, he is selling it. This is the only reason to go, look, listeners, um, it is, it is, I just want you to, look, listeners, God, I sounded like such a fucking morning radio dickhead. Mm -hmm. It was a, it's an article um, it's an article. It was on HuffPost. It's on HuffPost. It's on HuffPost. Like These weird Halloween costumes are perfect for any pandemic. Posted ten ten twenty. I, 
but the reason to go all the way through this is to i mean you got to see infrared man you got to see boner the caveman but yeah. to have boner the caveman on the same list as as a toddler's stay puffed marshmallow man costume but man that it's worth it it's worth the fucking journey i'll tell you right now i not only agree but the kid stay puffed marshmallow man looks like it's the best quality of any of this garbage we've seen right the entire it's, time it's gonna last a while and he is the his face is the exact opposite of the dog and the werewolf goddamn costume. Oh, for sure. This hey, kid wants to be in this costume. Um, I we did. I forgot to mention, and I feel bad. So we got our first email about what one of the listeners has learned. Oh, very good. Uh, I will give him a shout out. It is a friend of mine. His name is Andrew Tedy. Um, he is a, a very funny comic unto himself, and uh, just an all around. Solid dude. He's also the size of a Sasquatch. Mm. Um, and he goes by Class Squatch. Mm. Um, so, his, what I, and I don't remember which episode. Oh, no, excuse me. What I learned on Zig and Larry Ignore Names. Uh-huh. I learned that when I was in the army, I knew at least five Jacks. And that Gideon is either going to be a senator or a moonshiner. <laughs> I but I wanted to give uh, I wanted to give him a, a shout out because he took the time to email, so I wanted to make sure that uh, that we threw that out there. Fantastic. You know, I guess I'll I guess I'll save my my other story. Okay. I guess I'll have to because uh, that took us a while, buddy. It sure did. It but sure it was did. worth it. It was worth the journey. I think. I am not. I mean, I'm very upset about a lot of what I saw. I'm not upset with the journey. No, no. You know, it's 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 all about the journey, not the destination. <laughs> God. And as as most of my past sexual partners will tell you, the journey wasn't that great either. The journey was sticky and smelly. <laughs> the destination disappointing and made me want to call my parents. I God, I'm just choking back the journey destination joke that is about a train during the Holocaust, and I just can't. Yeah, I just need to say the premise, and I'm good. Yep, there you go. Yep. Hey, what'd you learn today, buddy? I learned that I will make a joke about trains in the Holocaust, and I really <laughs> don't give a shit. <laughs> uh, I learned that my ire knows no bounds when it comes to other people's joy. If I, in my arrogance, Deem it inappropriate. <laughs> and that's something I always knew about you. And it's something, yeah. it's what endeared you to my heart. I also learned that I should be a hell of a lot more afraid of giving Willow something sharp to throw. But I'm really into the idea. Yeah. Yeah. The Gideon likes uh, throwing knives and, and, and the throwing playing cards. Mm -hmm. And he's real good with them. And uh, you give Willow a light tomahawk, and she's gonna sink it wherever she wants to. And uh, <laughs> and that and that's uh, it's good enough for me, you know. Look, I I saw one time where you know some people say it takes a uh, a village to raise a child, and uh, in our situation and in our family, it just takes one child to raise a village. <laughs> <laughs> raise with a Z. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, just a. When she, I loved it when she threw and really sank that tomahawk. She turned and looked at me, and I was like, "Let the Nordic blood run!" <laughs> and she was like, "Yes!" <laughs> so she just knew. She Excellent. knew. It was the awesome. only shield maiden in Jerome, Illinois. <laughs> or, I'm, I'm good with it. Yeah, I'm good with it too. What did you learn? Uh, I learned that there's nothing that I like better. Than showing you stuff that pisses you off. It just brings me joy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I also, I love that we're doing a Halloween costume episode that may not come out until after Halloween. Well, hell, uh, we just aired one that I thought was going to be Halloween. That was last week. Yeah. That was the first of October, so I, I have no idea. Well, if I remember, maybe I'll post this. We'll just, we'll just switch up some... 
some uh, order here. We'll just switch up the order. <laughs> Were you just trying to choke down a verb? <laughs> <laughs> don't don't judge me. <laughs> I'm gonna take your line. Hey, bud, I love you. Love you back. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>